So let's uh, look at chapter 20. So chapter 20 um, is going to kind of continue a lot of the ideas that we've been looking at in the last few chapters, but um, now we're going to be looking at two groups together uh, instead of just one. But the fundamentals are very similar. Um, we just are kind of extending them to looking at two groups rather than rather than one. Um, so sampling distribution for the difference between two independent proportions. Uh, of course, when we talk about proportions, we're talking about categorical variables when certain assumptions and conditions are met, which we'll talk about. The sampling distribution uh, P hat, P1 hat minus P2 hat um, follows a normal model. We have a mean of the difference. And then this is this is the part that uh, is going to be a little bit different, a little bit new. Um, standard deviation of the difference is basically uh, the standard deviation of one plus the standard deviation of the other, and then we take the square root of the whole thing. So it's not the it's not that we're adding them exactly. Um, when you standard deviations when you combine variables works a little bit differently than what you might think. Um, notice that even though we're subtracting, we are going to actually add the standard deviations. Um, and one of the reason one of the reasons that actually works. Um, we could actually, we could, we could talk about why that works. Um, but, um, cause it's not ex exactly intuitive that you subtract two things and the difference gets bigger or the spread gets bigger. Um, but one, one way to kind of remember this is standard deviation always has to be positive because it's, it's just measuring a distance. And, um, so it always has to be positive, but if P2 is bigger than P1, then the difference would be negative and we cannot have that. Um, so that's one way to kind of remember that you're always going to be adding. Um, but if you if you like, you could you could probably look up examples for why um, why standard deviation gets bigger even if you're subtracting values. Um, but that's a little bit a little bit beyond what we need to talk about here. So just uh, just remember adding 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 standard deviations. We don't subtract standard deviations. So we're going to talk about confidence intervals in this one. Next one, we'll get into the uh, hypothesis testing. Uh, so for this example, uh, we have 57% of 248 boys had online profiles. 70% of 256 girls had online profiles. Construct a 95% confidence interval for the difference. Now, pay attention here because it does matter girls minus boys, not vice versa. Um, so with confidence interval, we can do this just directly on the calculator. We don't need to worry about this formula, um, although we will once we get to the testing. So on the TI calculator, you will go to stat and then test. And I will, I will post a video also of someone demonstrating this on the calculator, but uh, for now, we'll, we'll uh, I'll walk you through it um, because there's one, one main difference that they don't do on the video that I'm going to post. Um, but when we go to stat test, you're going to pick two proportion Z intervals. So the Z interval is when we're working with categorical variables. The T interval will be if we work with uh, quantitative. And then when you do that, you have um, looks similar to when we did the one proportion. But now, of course, we have two, basically the same thing doubled. So we have X1. So this is the number of successes. Um, with the girls in one will be the samples, sample size for the girls. X2 and N2 will go with boys and then we'll have the C level. So this one is the girls, this one is the boys. So X is just the number of successes. So how many of the boys, how many exactly of the boys had online profiles? So point five seven times 248 or sorry we're looking at the girls this one is the girls let's uh fix that so 0. 0.70 times 256 and we multiply that and we get 179.2 now that the calculator does not like a decimal in that spot so you need to round to the nearest integer so put 179 uh, the number of girls is 256 and then do the same thing for the boys we have 0. 0.57 
times 248. That gives 141.36. We're going to round that to the nearest integer, which is 141. And then the N is 248. And then we have the C level, which is 0.95. And so we put that in the calculator, uh, and you can see the answer here, uh, 0 0.047 to 21.3. Uh, and then we have the interpretation. We are 95% confident that the proportion of all teen girls who post online is between 4.7% and 21.4% higher than for all boys. Um, and so one, one thing to consider if you if you do this and you get the wrong answer, um, you might you might have switched. So you might have the boys up here and the girls down here, in which case you just get the negatives of the answers. And so then you just need to switch price switch. You, you will need to switch the order. Um, so if you did it wrong, for instance, you'd get sorry, that should be point two one four. But um so if you do it backwards, you get negative 0.214 and negative 0.047. So the numbers are switched because the smaller number is always going to be left and then the bigger number will be right. Um, but if you get the wrong answer, uh, that's one possibility. Besides, possibly this could cause a rounding error, possibly. Um, that's one thing to consider. You could have these reversed. Um, but the idea is still the same. We're, we're just kind of estimating, uh, getting an estimate of where we think the difference for all boys would be. Um, so let's talk about assumptions. These are basically the same assumptions that we've talked about before with the added. Um, so we have independence, randomization, 10% condition, success failure condition, these are these are all the same. Now the one added one is the independent group assumption. So the responses in the two groups are independent of each other. So the boys are not affecting the girls group, in other words, and vice versa. Um, okay, so we'll, we'll stop this one here. We'll start the next one with the hypothesis testing.